Hello everybody. Now I'll discuss uh, that how this heat contact units can be applicable for the different kind of the problem so that it will very uh, this will be uh, able to understand the application of the heat conduction equation for the different types of the problem. Let us start with this thing then in one practice problem for example the rectangular cast block is cooled down to room temperature. So one cast block we consider it has to cool down the room temperature from its liquid stage. So during the casting process rectangular block it is initially in the liquid stage that has to be cooled down to the room temperature. Write the governing heat conduction equation for this cooling process. So in this case is what equation we should consider. But first we need to understand that how this casting process involved is basically heat transfer in this casting process involved at three different stages we can divide it. For example, in the first stage the temperature from liquid metal in the, in the casting reduces to the liquidus temperature. So, so casting block initially is the molten stage. So molten stage it must be above the temperature it is above the melting point temperature. So it is a above melting point temperature. So it first stage it will transform from this melting temperature to the uh, liquidus temperature. In the second stage uh, liquidus temperature but here only the, the specific it will be released uh, during the uh, from here from Tp by Tl but without changing of the phase. So it will be the liquid phase but it will reach from the the peak temperature to the liquidus temperature. Now once we reach the liquidus temperature I can assume the, the solidification start at the liquidus temperature I, or I can say the phase change will start at the liquidus temperature. Now the second stage when the phase change occur in that case is the latent heat will be released and that is associated with the phase transformation from liquid phase to solid phase it will release the latent heat. So I can consider this is the second stage. Now this when the, there will be release of the latent heat so in terms of the mathematical equation this can be considered as a there is having some kind of the heat generation associated with the system. Now when it is the change of the phase from liquid phase to solid phase at particular liquidus temperature after that liquidus temperature try to reach the room temperature but here there will be release of the uh, specific heat in the last stage the temperature of the solid phase casting reduces to the the solidus temperature to the to the room temperature. So I can say here since I assuming the actual problem it is associated with the iron cast uh, rectangular cast block actually uh, if there is a um, alloy system then the temperature range of the the uh, change of the phase it should be liquidus and solidus temperature. So phase of the temperature occurs between the solidus and the liquidus temperature but in case of the pure metal this temperature is a single point temperature that is called the melting point temperature. So I assume the single point temperature so at this particular temperature there will be the heat generation. So, so therefore last stage the temperature of the solidified casting reduces from the solidus temperature to the room temperature. So we can see there is a peak temperature to the liquidus temperature then the change of the phase between liquidus to solidus temperature after that the release of the um, specific heat solidus temperature to the uh, ambient temperature. So this is the uh, typical pattern of the, the temperature changes associated or heat transfer associated with this practical problem. Uh, here you can see that for the first and the last stage so transient heat conduction equation with no heat generation will be applicable because here there is only change in the temperature without any generation of the heat happens within the system for the first stage and last stage and it is in the second stage. So for the first stage and the last stage uh, we need to consider there is no heat generation term. So we can simply use this equation this equation corresponds to the transient state equation but there is no heat generation term. But when there is a release of the latent heat and in that case is change of the temperature between the liquidus and solidus temperature here we have to consider the heat generation term and the different we can take care of the heat generation term since there is a change of the phase and there will be some release of the latent heat that is why release of the latent heat is incorporated in the mathematically using the heat generation term. So it is the same equation but including the heat generation term if we solve this equation then we will be able to get the temperature distribution at this particular point. So here you see that this is the problem but we need to understand the heat transfer phenomena associated with the problem. After that we need to choose one particular equation which equation should be applicable for this particular problem. Now you can look into further also that heat conduction equation are also derived from the energy balance principle that we have already discussed these things but the thermal conditions of the domain do not affect from this equation. So thermal conditions of the domain they may not affect the this uh, equation form but we can be incorporated in the different way in sometimes the we need to 
uh, specify one uh, boundary condition. So, that boundary condition does not influence the change of the governing equation, the form of the equation. So, so that form of the equation remains the same if, if, even if it is, there is a change of the thermal conditions or there might be some change in the boundary condition. So, without thermal conditions, whether in the form of heat flux or the temperature, the temperature distribution can be estimated by the heat conduction equation. So, I mean to say that here the thermal condition is basically indicates the any kind of the boundary conditions that is interacting over the surface that does not change in the to select the basic form of the equations. Now, certain conditions are provided at the uh, bounding surface of the domain. So, definitely in the bounding surface over the domain, a certain condition may be provided some thermal condition over the the uh, boundary and that is treated as the boundary conditions. So, therefore, boundary condition actually helps to find the very unique solution of this particular heat conduction equation. So, that is why it is very important along with the choosing the particular governing equation of the problem, it is also necessary to just choose the proper boundary conditions such that you will be able to achieve the particular, the you will be able to solve this governing equation. So, therefore, we see that for example, the general solution of the differential equation may be assume this is a steady state equation, one dimensional steady state equation d2 divided dx square that we have already derived from the three dimensional heat conduction equation. So, here if you see that here the temperature can be represented the C1 x plus C2. Now, problem is that how to evaluate the values of the C1 and C2. The C1 and C2 can be evaluated if you from the proper boundary conditions we can evaluate the values of the C1 and C2. So, some solution are for example, the some solution Tx can be uh, 2x plus 3. So, C1 x in the form it can be 5 x minus 4, it can be 3 x plus 9. So, these are the different solutions and the solution represents there here it is a linear equation you can see in this problem it is a linear equation so this thing and here is a linear equation. So, all this solution we can obtain different operand, but the why we are getting the multiple solution it entirely depends on the if we change the it depends on the boundary condition what kind of the boundary conditions and the from the boundary condition what values C1 and C2 are obtained based on that the nature of the solution the can be followed. But nature functional form of the solution is the same, but these constant values are different all these cases. So, all these cases the temperature is varying linearly, but the depending upon the boundary condition these are the different solutions we can get. So, therefore, the solution of the equation that satisfies the conditions is uh, T0 say suppose this is 50 degree and this is 10 degree centigrade that we can put the boundary uh, should be in the one boundary should be 50 degree and another boundary should be the 10 degree. If we define this way then we get the uh, unique solution of the Tx and from these two points we can get the solution of the C1 and C2 we can obtain and we get the unique solution for this particular condition. So, here is the important. So, now, now we, what you observe that d2 t by dx square equal to 0 if you solve this one dimensional heat conduction equation your temperature should vary linearly that is the basic uh, understanding from the solving of this equation. Now, we try to look into the various boundary conditions and uh, what way we observe in the practical problem. See the various boundary conditions that uh, one case it is the temperature boundary condition. So, this is the solution domain is defined. So, here we see that temperature boundary condition T 0 T, 0 T means at say one dimensional problem, I am talking about all one dimensional problem, 0 is the space that x equal to x equal to 0 at time t equal to at time t the temperature equal to T 1. So, temperature equal to T 1 here it is a assuming the 150 degree centigrade, but other boundary condition at T at a distance it is here it is at a other surface at the T at x equal to L at time t the temperature equal to uh, 70 degree centigrade. So, temperature equal to T2 is a general form of the uh, boundary conditions. Now, uh, here you can see 150 degree and uh, LT it is a uh, 70 degree. This is the way we can define. So, uh, uh, the special variation of the temperature. So, here uh, that uh, at the one, one case the time T and other, at the same time T also at the other surface. So, it is a kind of the distribution from the heat conduction equation we can get the solution of the uh, temperature, but in this cases we need to utilize these two boundary conditions the temperature boundary condition that means temperature is defined over the boundary. So, some particular practical problem it might happen that we can define the heat flux boundary condition. So, we can define the heat flux rather than the temperature. So, that is uh, about the this surface heat applied heat flux can be Q equal to K minus K into del T by del X. So, heat flux can be defined and here heat the others boundary also heat flux can be defined. So, at L equal to uh, time T 
that x equal to 0 heat flux equal to defined here x equal to L heat flux is defined but there is no change in the uh, time here. So, at time the same time the heat flux in the one surface and other surface the heat flux can be defined and from there we can uh, solve the, the equation and based on that we will get the solution of the temperature distribution with this particular uh, boundary condition. And certain cases the insulated boundary condition we can say that insulated in insulated boundary condition means there is no heat transfer from the surface. So, uh, K A heat flux equal to 0 that means K A D, K D T by del x del T by del x equal to 0 that indicates the insulation boundary condition in this surface and other surface we can prescribe the temperature. So, suppose other surface is basically maintaining the temperature of 60 degree centigrade. So, this way we can represent the different boundary conditions. Then symmetry boundary condition, symmetry boundary condition we can put in this way that symmetric surface the temperature distribution with respect to this particular line is the same. Then symmetric boundary condition says that temperature gradient along the normal to the symmetric line that should be equal to 0. So, here you can see this is the symmetric line and del T by del x, but del T by del x here normal to that del T by del x should be 0. So, gradient should be 0 and that is usually treated as a symmetric boundary condition. So, similarly if the convection boundary condition can also be defined. So, convection boundary condition we can say that at this particular this surface this first surface what is the heat conductance that means heat is minus k del T by del x the heat flux here we represents and that is equivalent to the loss of the heat from the uh, surface. So, h equal to h into T difference between the two temperature T the outside temperature and the uh, uh, the temperature um, here at, at this at the boundary what is the temperature T 0 T. So, T 0 T the temperature of the boundary. So, it means that what is the heat is conducted to the wall the similar way the from the wall also heat is losing by the convection. So, from the conduction is there heat conduction over the surface that is equal to the loss of the heat to this and the, uh, the total we are basically the heat flux we are balancing over the surface. So, over the surface what is the heat conducted the same amount of the heat is basically convected a the through the mode of the heat convection. So, this way we can see similarly other surface also we can see that uh, heat is conducted the conduction over the surface and then this is equal to the heat conduction equation the flux and from here the loss by convection that is the this term. So, that should be equal. So, this way we can put the different uh, boundary conditions. And similarly, radiation boundary condition can also be applied here also. So, radiation boundary condition is something like that minus k into del T by del x the heat is conducted through the over the at the surface here of the surface it is conducted over the surface and then from there heat loss by the radiation from the surface. But in this cases we are neglecting the convection. But usually in practical problem what is the heat conducted to the surface here the but the same that is equal to uh, convection and Q radiation both loss will be there. So, that should be balanced. So, what is the heat conducted to the surface that should be equal to the equivalent to the heat loss by convection and heat loss by the radiation. But here if there is a we neglecting the convection part the radiation is there only then that should make the balance energy balance at, at the surface. So, heat conducted to the surface the heat loss by the through the radiation mode. So, heat conducted to the surface loss by the radiation. So, this type of the boundary conditions and but of course, this boundary condition is basically necessary to define depending upon the problem itself. Now, we look into the very practical application of the heat conduction equation in the material processing few practical applications Here you can see that. Now, few important points is that so we have already derived the heat conduction equation we can understand different form of the heat conduction equation and that can be utilized in the various material processing technologies. So, and but of course, heat conduction equation this is the government equation the equations are the same irrespective of the what are the process manufacturing process. So, depending upon the initial and the different boundary condition the solution of the heat conduction equation can vary which can give the different uh, result temperature distribution gives the temperature revolution of the particular process. But remember we are solving the same government equation, but the difference in the output in the temperature difference will be there distribution if there is a change in the initial conditions and the boundary conditions. So, therefore, 
temperature evolution particularly manufacturing the metallurgy utilized so all usually different manufacturing processes and in metallurgical aspect we can utilize or there is importance to understand the temperature distribution uh, to analyze the process so in this case temperature distribution can helps to improve the product quality to modify the manufacturing process so that's why we need to understand the different temperature distribution associated with the any kind of the material processing technologies but general application is that we can see that heat treatment of metals and alloy yeah, here you can find out the application of this uh, heat conduction equation then welding and join you can see casting and solidification you can find out the application forming operation 3d printing additive manufacturing and even coating solution we can find out the application of this heat conduction equation and even in general heat exchange and the cooling system also we can find the application of the this heat conduction equation now here sequence of the dealing with the basic metal processing techniques using the heat conduction equation here you can see that what can be the sequence when you try to analyze the any kind of the metal processing uh, techniques using the heat conduction equation so problem first we need to define the problem setup problem, problem setup means we need to define the geometry basically we have to fix the solution domain we are looking for the temperature distribution of this particular domain by solving the heat conduction equation then we have to define the material which material we are handling whether we are handling the aluminium or aluminium alloy or whether we handling the any kind of the uh, nickel alloy or you can handle the steel based on that basically you need to assign the material and the different properties you know the heat transfer analysis the this thermal conductivity specific heat and uh, uh, density of this particular material is important and therefore if you change the material the all these properties will be different and next part is the what are the depending upon the problem what can be the initial conditions and the boundary condition initial condition means what are the initial status of the that at time t equal to zero for phase we, we want to start the analysis tangent analysis what is the status of the type time t equal to zero so for example at time equal to t zero t the temperature of the domain equal to ambient temperature or it might happen and time t equal to zero the domain temperature may be some preheated we have already preheated the sample so preheating temperature uh, might be there so that's why that initial condition has to define which can easily define as a function of the time along with the what can be the boundary interaction is following so we need accordingly we need to define the boundary condition so once we define the problem setup then we try to look into the which conduction equation we should follow so therefore in that cases we need to follow the formula the heat conduction equation so in that case we try to do the what are the geometric shape of the domain if it is a cylindrical system is suitable here or in the spherical system is suitable or simply plain wall system will be uh, suitable here so accordingly you can choose the 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 coordinate system and based on and as per the different form of the equation so we have to look whether there is a heat generation or not term is there or not whether we want to do for the steady state analysis transient analysis as per analysis we have to choose the particular equation that we have already discussed all possible variation of the heat conduction equation already discussed from there we have to choose the particular equation heat conduction equation now then apply the boundary condition apply various boundary conditions such as such as at the whether we need to apply the uh, boundary condition of the form of a temperature over the surface or boundary condition in the form of a heat flux over the surface that is in general in the appropriate format we put the boundary condition then we search for the solution of the heat conduction equation along with the boundary condition so once we always we try to solve the basic governing equation here the heat conduction equation along with the boundary conditions then we'll get the solution now the solution technique can be analytical can be numerical all, all techniques is there but if you want to do three dimensional heat conduction equation usually we do for the it's very difficult to find out the exact the differential equation analytically so we need to follow the some kind of the numerical solution of the differential equation and, and in that cases we can apply the finite element or finite differential method can be applied or finite volume method can also be applied to get the solution of the equation so once we get the equation then we can analyze obtain the thermal results basically how it changes with time and space we get the analysis mean at the different positions how the temperature is changing but temperature is the output so solving means here we will get the temperature uh, as a function of now we can analyze we are we, we try to look into uh, that how the temperature is varying from one position to another position or how temperature is varying with respect to time so that kind of the information will be getting after the solution of the equation so once we get it then we try to look into the 
optimization means the optimization of the cooling rate heating rate and temperature just to get the the uh, solution uh, the which point the the heating rate will be maximum which part the cooling rate will be the less all this kind of the information we, we are getting and we can do the parametric analysis such that we will try to get the some optimized result i mean to say that in that cases we can change the input parameter again we redo the all this analysis all the steps also then we will get the another result so that's why we have the scope for getting the different results and from there we can find out the optimum results which is suitable or which are looking for by solving this heat conduction equation and that we try to utilize this thing and further information for the any modification of the process is required or this process with this particular temperature distribution or with this particular cooling rate or the what kind of the solidification behavior you can expect what kind of the microstructure we can expect from this analysis so that kind of the information we will be getting if we do all this heat transfer analysis associated with the manufacturing process now even uh, let us look into the heat treatment problem also so we consider the steel component that requires the heat treatment to relieve the internal stresses so that heat treatment so basically heat treatment means we have to need to apply the heat flux to the domain and then internal stress will be relieved and that can improve the mechanical properties but in this case how what we can incorporate the heat transfer analysis in a heat treatment process so therefore in this case the temperature temperature distribution uh, can be obtained in the component during the heating and the cooling phase in this case the heat conduction equation is utilized with appropriate initial and boundary condition even for the any kind of the heat treatment problem so in this particular problem we assume the initially alloy is basically at the room temperature that the initial condition we define then heat is supplied uniformly that heat flux is supplied uniformly and we are assuming the constant thermal properties with this cases we can see that the following heat conduction equation is used during the heat, uh, heating and the uh, cooling period so here you see that uh, tangent heat conduction equation 3 heat conduction equation but without any heat generation term we can utilize this basic form of the equation for the heat treatment problem because in the heat treatment problem in the sample we apply the heat externally to the system so here there is no question of the any kind of the heat generation within the system that's why we can neglect the heat generation term in this particular analysis so they hear the way to choose the equation for the heat treatment process now here we say further you can explore these things now during the holding period a steady state heat conduction is actually used because uh, in this case this is the sample so initially we holding this thing we just heat the sample so during the holding period a steady state heat conduction is used so the steady state heat conduction is used and the initial phase and because initial phase uh, when they apply the heat flux then it goes to the transient state so temperature can vary with respect to time after certain time then it becomes holding at a constant because the heat treatment process the sample initially will supply the heat then once it reach the heat it reach certain temperature and then with this particular temperature we can hold the sample for a long time the same temperature after that we gradually releasing that in the cooling phase we then gradually from this particular temperature to it is uh, coming back to the room temperature so in this case so i, I can say that time temperature is something like that initially uh, temperature increases to the system we can hold it for a constant longer time and then during the cooling phase the temperature is basically uh, decreases so this is the typical time temperature diagram for a, for a heat treatment process so that means initially there is a change of the temperature with respect to time so that's why first phase we use the poly heat conduction equation during this heating phase and the cooling phase because both the cases the temperature is varying with respect to time so in both the cases we use this equation but it is not associated any kind of the heat generation term but at the holding time so at this point in the heat treatment process we keep the sample for a longer time at a constant temperature in that case we need to follow the the steady state equation uh, in this particular uh, case and once in the cooling phase again we use the transient state so initial and the final stage is transient state and in between the holding period we can consider the the steady state equation so just looking into the problem we have to look into the the type of the equation and what is the which form of the equation is applicable for this particular problem then we can look into another problem that is called the welding problem in this case consider the two plates are welding together using the mig welding process so we use the mig welding process we see the mig welding process how it works uh, this is the uh, domain and there is a application of the heat from the uh, torch so the heat is supplied to the system and then 
this sam sample will be heated and we try to interest it this what is the temperature distribution or this surface now to determine the temperature distribution during the welding process the heat conduction equation definitely will solve it and assumption the plates are initially at room temperature so initial condition we define and constant thermal properties we consider the following heat conduction is, is used here now here see this is the heat conduction equation but here we use the the there is a heat generation term because in the welding process when the arc is interacting over the substrate then we can consider the either the surface flux because there is a arc is interacting over the surface but in the in this cases the this flux actually penetrate the this uh, the arc penetrate to the surface so we can treat this as a volumetric heat source term so once we understand the volumetric heat source term then volumetric heat source term can be represented can be incorporated in the form of the internal heat generation term in the basic heat conduction equation so that's why here q dot represents the internal heat generation per unit volume so this is the volumetric heat so uh, that is the heat source in case of welding process so that heat source we incorporated here and we use the heat source and then we use the tangent analysis in this case now uh, here you can see that at the welding zone heat source is defined which represents the heat supplied by the torch now on the other faces heat flux boundary condition is applied so if you look in this is the domain now you see this is the torch is inter heat source is interacting over the surface but we represent the the heat flux not uh, it's, it's a penetrated throughout the volume so therefore we use the as a volumetric heat here so we use the q dot generation term and but there is a heat loss from the surface and in the form of a radiation and a convection uh, both radiation boundary condition as well as we need to for the convection also convective heat loss and radiation heat loss both will be there from the surface so that we can treat in the boundary condition uh, from the boundary heat loss by the convection and radiation but that represent in the form of a heat flux so if we remember that the heat flux boundary condition can also be applied so in this particular problem the heat flux boundary condition from the surface we can apply the heat flux boundary condition but this heat flux boundary condition we have written here but it should be the convection plus radiation both are there associated with the heat flux boundary condition but heat generation this heat source in the volumetric heat it generation term will be the q dot and then we we'll get the temperature distribution this is the this color this is a color variation you can see this represents the temperature distribution of the domain and that is the interest we can give the what is the temperature at particular point and even at particular time so this solution gives you the conduction equation provides the tangent evolution of the thermal profile that means temperature profile in the solution domain and that is the results of the by solving the heat conduction equation in a welding problem now if we compare uh, these two that this heat treatment problem so heat treatment problem there is no heat generation term we just we can put the supply through the domain with the application of the heat flux through the surface so that from the surface we can represent the surface flux boundary condition we can apply and we can solve this governing equation without any heat generation term and we will get the temperature distribution and depending upon the position whether it is in initial state and final state cooling state or heating state and the steady state uh, in between the holding time the steady state equations are solved in this case but in welding problem we can see that uh, the heat generation term can be in the volumetric heat if we consider then the this volumetric heat term will be incorporated through the heat generation term here in the governing equation and from the boundary there will always be the heat loss by convection radius so in that cases we need to apply the heat flux boundary condition in the form of heat flux and then we will getting the temperature distribution and temperature distribution in the form of a uh, over the domain so this way we can distinguish the problem of the heat treatment and problem of the welding so similar kind of the problem we will discuss when you try to do the heat transfer analysis associated with the uh, any kind of the uh, the different kind of the manufacturing problem now here we have tried to explain that the different application of the uh, different material processing technologies and what uh, we can utilize the heat conduction equation along with the the boundary conditions and to get the temperature distribution of the domain and this will help for the temperature distribution to obtain uh, this uh, to take some decision from the temperature distribution whether uh, 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 through this analysis we can we can say whether any kind of the defect can be produced or any kind of the what kind of the microstructure will be produced that information can be or conclusion can be drawn from the temperature analysis so i think that's all and for the time being so thank you very much uh, for your kind attention